live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE, covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to the Big Easy, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. And my name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with Stu Miniman, my co-host, for two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Veeam on. Gavin Cohen is here. He's the Vice President of Product Marketing at Nimble, a Hewlett Packard Enterprise company now. Gavin, good to see you. Congratulations on the exit. Thank you, Dave. So, new times, new, whole new, a lot, lot going on. I mean, first of all, what's it like to be part of HPE? Is, uh, you know, it's early days, but how's that going? So we're a few weeks into it. It's um, yeah. extremely exciting so far. We're running at you know, 1,000 miles an hour, and um, what's been absolutely terrific is on the acquisition, it's an expansion acquisition, so that means the entire Nimble storage product line continues to exist and stays alive, but we get access to a massive global sales force that we didn't have as an independent company. So, very exciting stuff for us. And a huge channel as well. I mean, I haven't talked to folks at Nimble, on the Cube anyway, since, God, I was back at one of the SNWs, <laughs> Stu. So maybe you can give us the sort of Nimble 101, if you wouldn't sure, mind, Gavin. Sure, sure. So if you look, I mean, really the, the things, there's several things that set Nimble apart. We all, with a bunch of other flash startups, um, had first products to market around 2010. Nimble really accelerated that. So to the point of the acquisition, we had over 10,000 customers worldwide. Um, and we really managed to very much change the game in storage from uh, starting as a, a company focused on hybrid storage. We had a very successful launch last year. Um, of our all flash and managed to turn a very large portion of our business into all flash. But overriding that and, and probably the, the thing that sets us apart more than anything from not just the storage startups but from all the, the large storage vendors is our use of predictive analytics and what we've been able to do with it. So talk a little bit more about that. Uh, sure. So I mean our platform's called InfoSight and the idea is in the infrastructure that we exist in, so the storage array spanning all the way through the networks, the, the compute, all the way up to the hypervisor, every day we collect millions and millions of sensor data points. Actually, as a collective base, we're processing every second millions of these status sensor data points. And what we're doing with it is we're passing it through all these techniques of predictive analytics and machine learning, and we use it really to predict and prevent problems. So our goal, is not just delivering fast flash performance from the array, but really this end-to-end -end delivery of, of data up to the application in a, in a better way than is otherwise possible. So you kind of had in the early days, it was the original EMC phone home, right? We all remember that. And, and then around sort of the virtualization guys, the th three pars, the compellents, they had what we used to call the hero reports, and it was good. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of a phone home on steroids. What you're talking about is a whole new advancement uh, in analytics that drives you know, anticipatory actions, potentially. Is that right? Is that very, how you're Very much. And I mean, there are maybe three numbers that speak to it. So 86% of problems that would normally involve a, a call to vendor support, so in this case, Nimble support, we completely end-to-end -end automate all the way from recognizing the problem before the customer even sees the problem through to, to resolution. And it's pretty remarkable because it's not just the, the stuff you'd expect from a phone home where we recognize a power supply is going wrong or a SSD is not working correctly. We can recognize you know, misconfigurations on the host or a bad HBA or a multi-pathing you know, setting that's not correct that's impacting performance and then proactively tell the customer about it, they may not be aware, and actually tell them how to resolve it. So it's kind of a remarkable one. Yeah, uh, hey, Gavin, I, I say, if, if this announced today, you'd probably say that you're an artificial intelligence company uh, that, that's, that, that, right. that's going to help. We just uh, hadn't quite coined that word when um, we came out. And, yeah. You know, <coughs> it, it really is, because you look at, you know, I said there were sort of a, a few interesting metrics. The other one that's sort of been astounding, particularly for you know, new technology in a world where storage has been around for many, many years, we've hit well over six nines of measured availability across our install base, but not just across one configuration, across every nimble array out there running every version of OS in every kind of environment, we're well over the, the six nines of availability. And then probably the most astounding of all is 
54% of the issues that InfoSight resolves are not actually tied to the storage. So they're all these uh. problems that are outside of storage, and that's the stuff that customers just love, because these are these needle in a haystack problems with VMware settings or you know problems on the network that get blamed on the storage and end up having a root cause outside of. How do you get visibility on you know beyond your own little world of storage? Yeah. So um, that's our part of our secret sauce. So we have these you know collectors. So it all stems from the array, but we also collect up through the stack. So we have our vCenter agent as an example. And they all feed in analytics. So a lot of what was built into Nimble from day zero was just this infrastructure of sending out sensor, sensor data and then collecting it and processing it. And then over the years, we've just expanded. So we started where we just collected from the array. Now we push out of the array and, and sort of cover most of the infrastructure. And um, that's really where the, the differentiation is because when you correlate all those different data points, you get some really interesting insights. So you ingest that data in essentially yep. in real time. Yep, yep. And then process it and process spit it back it out. And help the customers. I, I love this new metrics, you know, when, when you can, you, you, I think it gives substance to, to disruption when you have new metrics that you're creating, like in particular, 86% <laughs> you know, of, of the failures are automated, or the yeah. problems are, are automated, that there's no human, so that I guess that's the, that's the fourth metric, which you, 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 it's hard to get, but how much time you save people. Oh, it is, and, and it's, it's almost impossible to measure yeah. because you know, no one publishes their um, yeah. you know, amount of time wasted on, on storage, but we know just anecdotally when you talk to any customer, any customer with any vendor's um, products, when they run well, they run well. When they don't, you know, hunting down those problems and dealing with multiple vendors and everything, it's, it's an absolute nightmare. Mm. I think that's what we've managed to sort of crack into and, and really you know, deliver something better for our customers. And I mean, the other, while we're on numbers, um, net promoter scores get thrown around a lot, but as an independent company, Nimble has the highest storage net promoter score in the industry, so we, crossed over 85 is our wow. net promoter score. And it's mostly when you talk to customers, it's just that support experience. They've never seen anything like it from a, a vendor. No, that, that's yeah. great. Uh, I couldn't help but notice when uh, the keynote yeah. was going on, they put up uh, the key sponsors that, that, that at different yeah. levels, both HPE was there and Nimble was there. That's so right. your team was already planning to be here prior to the acquisition. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the, the partnership, sure. uh, You know, any specific products you have at Nimble yeah. uh, that, that fit in this space. Yeah, so probably two pieces that are interesting. Um, we have very deep integration with Veeam, and we were actually the first of the, the, the smaller storage vendors to be integrated with Veeam. If you looked initially, they integrated themselves with you know, the, the big players that you'd expect. Um, we were the first of the others. The integration lends itself exactly to what we do well. We do a really good job of snapshots and replications and you know, supporting the number of snapshots and replication points. So that's just a really slick integration where you can drive the entire backup process through Veeam, but actually behind the scenes, Nimble does all the, the data movements and the, the snapshot creation under Veeam's management. The second thing, and this is actually a product that we show, showcased for the first time at Veeam on, so at our stand, the, now the HPE stand, um, is what we call a secondary flash array. And it's kind of a, a very unique device because when you think about backup, most backup repositories are that they're a one-way repo repository. You put stuff in, you access it when you need to, but when you access it, it needs to come back. You need to copy it back and it's slow. And what we've done is we've built a secondary storage device that's great at accepting Veeam backups. It's got inline dedupe and compression and everything, so it's very efficient. But you can actually run real workloads on this device. So we've come up with this idea of, you know, put your backup data to work. Instead of having it sit there idle, oh. you can spin up dev test and QA and do things with that data or verify your backups, because yeah, now you have performance. Yeah, it's always been the problem with storage, right? If you make replicas or if you have backups, you've got you know a certain amount of resources that aren't being used, or yeah. the, the other piece is you know, backup's great, but recover is everything, so yeah. you need to be able to be fast, you need to be able to be uh, nimble, I guess would be the case, there we right? Go. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> so it's really, a, so I, I would infer that what that is is a productivity tool that you can also use for backups, is that? <laughs> Is that yeah, a fair way you know, to do it? I think it, it's actually, I think, how it'll end up getting used. I think 
the, the use case always starts a backup. You need to put your backup data somewhere. And most people will choose to put it somewhere that's highly you know, cost optimized, knowing full well the trade-off is when you need to restore it, it's not going to behave like your primary device. This is opening up a whole new, as you said, a, a new use case where you get the data there, but then really the interesting thing comes that you use that every day. So you can run you know, all, all these other secondary processes on it, or you could fail over to it and actually run production on it if you needed to. And you can be cost competitive because of your, your data reduction techniques? Is That's that, right. Is that right? Exactly. Can, can we, okay, so for those of you out there that don't believe that, let's push on to that, that a little <laughs> bit. It's just, the, the, the spinning disk guys will yep. tell us, you know, it's true for so-called high spin speed devices, but when you get to the, you know, cheap and deep stuff, we yep. can still, we're still much, much cheaper. Um, your counter would be that you can't reduce, data reduce that stuff effectively, or is that right? Yeah, I, you know, I think really you, you, got, you got to look at the, the usual, the, the cost trade-offs, right? If you want the, and, and H, our, now the portfolio that we're part of is a, is a perfect example. If you want the most cost-effective place to, to put your backup data, it's the HP Store Once product. It's right. totally designed around being an efficient destination for backups. It's got you know dedupe like nothing else, so it'll crunch that data down, and you can store it for you know months or years very cost-effectively. And Where then you're done. Then you're done, <laughs> yeah. right? Now you can get the data back, and yeah. it's absolutely rock solid, but it doesn't behave like a primary storage device. Our secondary flash array is somewhere in between the cost of primary disk and, or primary flash and hybrid disk, and that sort of cheap and deep, okay. in that it's got a lot of the low cost attributes because of compression and mm -hmm. dedupe, but it's now got IOPS, so you can do things with it, and that's really where no secondary devices has gone and before. Data so. sharing, and it's got a cherry on top and some sprinkles. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Gavin, so. last question I have for you is, you know, the acquisition's yep. done. Yep. Uh, you talked a little bit about the channel. Many people look at InfoSight as kind of the, the gem of, uh, of, of your portfolio. Can you give us any guidance as to where we can expect to see that driven throughout the HP portfolio? Yeah, sure. So the best thing is I'm not yet, I think, subject to all knowing about all the rules of what I can and Great, can't talk about. Great, give us all the info. So I'll, I'll let it all out. <laughs> no, I mean, as a very clear state of direction, um, you know, HP acquired Nimble, you know, a large reason was InfoSight. And just looking at what we've done as an independent company, I mean, imagine if you could start to transform the support processes that HP could offer and bring some of these capabilities to their own product lines. So we're already embarking on looking at doing that first with the three par product line. And while I won't give you dates, I can say that there are a lot of people aggressively working to get something out. And I think you'll see that spread pretty quickly because the, the IP that we have and the data scientists and the sort of infrastructure that we've built to, to build to perform these analytics um, is extensible and we're, we're pretty excited about that. So, Excellent. Yeah. Gavin, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you very much. Great to see Appreciate you. Appreciate it. you coming Thank on. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest shortly.